Welcome once again. I know this will probably be two videos in one week, but uh, there was quite a few things that just kind of popped up last night, and it looks like that I may be tied up in a situation next week I'll not be able to put a video on. Uh, but if something happens and I get relief, I may go ahead and put another one on, but right now it's not looking too promises. Uh, promising there's several people that's uh, sick, uh, quite a few in the hospital that I need to go make visitations with. Uh, there's at least two or three possibly four homes I would like to be able to go out and be in next week and kindly witness to them about the Lord in hopes that uh, I might be able to at least sow some seed there that it would uh, be able to get the Holy Spirit to work in them and to get them to thinking about that uh, of their soul uh, and if so glory be to God I give all the glory to God it's nothing within myself because if it had not been with that of the Spirit of God dwelling in me, I would be nothing. It's just that plain and simple. Uh, I'd just be another uh, a flesh out here walking. I'd be like dead man's bones, just walking around, waiting to die. Already dead, just waiting to be buried. That's about the way it is with the lost person. You're dead. You're dead in your sins. Uh, and without Christ, you have no hope of life. So that's about the way you look at it. Uh, and uh, I truly hope I get to be able to make visitations into these homes concerning these that are lost and undone. Uh, there's a couple in each home, uh, one to two in each home that at least are saved in the church every Sunday, and we're going to try our best to go and visit and uh, be able to be a witness to some of those that uh, are not yet saved, so it looks like it's going to be a pretty tied up week for me next week. Uh, and, and I'll just tell you, uh, we're living in this time, if there's ever a time that uh, uh, we needed to be a light into this world. I can remember Christ one day uh, speaking to his disciples, uh, and he was speaking concerning that of the harvest uh, in Matthew chapter 9, I believe it is, uh, along about 38 or 39, the 38 or 39 verse, or maybe 38. 37, 38, I'll tell you, it's the last two verses, I'll tell you that much. Uh, I can't remember if it's 38 or 39 or 37, 38, but it's the last two uh, verses in chapter 9 of the, uh, Matthew's gospel uh, that Christ spoke to his uh, disciples and said, uh, and told them that the, the harvest is plenty, but the labors are few. And he goes on down to say in the last verse there that pray ye therefore that the Lord uh, would send forth uh, into that of his harbor, uh, harvest labors uh, that would be able to bring uh, that of the harvest in. And if there's ever a time that we need the laboring of that of God's children into this other lost and dying world, it's the time in which we live and we truly need to be out there trying to witness to those that we have been given opportunity to witness to. Uh, this week we're going to study on two topics and I hope I can do it in one video I really do uh, I'm going to try to go through it as simple as I can uh, to give you the highlights of both of these two different topics that you may fully understand it uh, and uh, what we're going to try our best to uh, study on is that of the two greatest battles that a Christian is faced with once he becomes a child of the king once you are saved, there's two battles that you will be faced with, and they will be your two greatest battles throughout life. And uh, I want to do this for two reasons. One reason, I don't want to discourage you in any way. That's not what this is about, but it's to let you know and get more of a feeling and more of a uh, assurance that you know what you're up against. And by doing that, you will have better knowledge uh, of how to overcome it or defeat it uh, in that of your spiritual walk with the Lord. Uh, the second reason I want to do this is because one of the topics, it seems like too many times uh, God's people uh, will come against that of God's people concerning this other subject. And they put walls and stumbling blocks up in their path and uh, a lot of times causes them uh, to be so ashamed of coming back to the Lord. They just uh, pretty well throw their hands up and walk away from it and just say within themselves, what's the use? Uh, this is all people's going to remember me by. Uh, 
uh, about. And I, and I don't want nobody to have to go through life like that. There's no reason for it. There's no reason for that of a brother or sister to try to throw an occasion in your walks to that of trying to make it back to the Lord if you get out of God's will. But the two stu uh, topics we're going to study on today is that of Satan and that of the flesh, two of the greatest battles you'll ever face in your walks with that of the Lord. Uh, we find that in Ephesians chapter uh, 6 verse 12 that Paul uh, made a statement that we wrestle not against that of flesh and blood, uh, but against uh, principalities and powers uh, of, uh, and, and against that of rulers of darkness uh, of this world against spiritual, uh, spiritual weaknesses in high places. Uh, other words, the evil spirits we're going to be in battle with from uh, now until we go on to be with the Lord. Uh, this ain't a battle begin that, uh, with that of the flesh and blood, but it's a battle between that of uh, principalities and powers in higher places. And uh, it's no doubt a battle. And, and Satan, uh, uh, this is what uh, I find a lot of people does a lot of times. And I uh, don't know why they do it. I've done it myself in a few areas, so I'm as guilty as the rest of you uh, in times past. But we seem, and I am not in no way giving glory to that of Satan in any way, so don't take this that way. But a lot of people seem to underestimate the power of that of Satan. And believe you me, he's got more power than you can ever imagine. He can uh, chew you up and spit you out before you realize what happens. If you try to go on head to head with him one on one, you don't be that naive. Uh, I, I'll tell this little short story and get on into the lesson, but I had a real good close friend of mine uh, back when I was holding so many revivals. I don't hold that many revivals now and then, but I still hold some on occasions. Uh, and back whenever I was pastoring churches, he'd always come to revivals where I was at and always come visit me when I was pastoring churches. But there was a man who set up a tent down there at this place and he was having tent meetings. And he kept on and kept on me go with him one night. And uh, uh, to, to be honest with you, I believe this man had good intentions. I believe he uh, truly had got saved and he announced his calling to preach. And he'd been in there for the Lord for a little over a year and a half, two years. And he started preaching, preached in several churches and set up a tent. And uh, God had delivered him from that of uh, uh, drugs and alcohol, and uh, really, I mean, it was amazing how he got cleaned up, but anyway, I went down there with him, and, and lo and behold, and I'm sure it was uh, through ignorance, it wasn't, uh, I don't think he realized the statement he made, but he got up and started preaching on that of the devil, and uh, uh, about how greater is he that's, uh, that's he that's in you that's in the world, uh, and out of nowhere, there he goes to challenging for the devil to come come at him. If he wanted to, if he thought he could take him, just come right ahead. I don't care a bit to go head to head with you. And I thought to myself, how foolish and how crazy for any man to make such a statement. Uh, even though I knew he was very young in the Lord, not been in there long. Uh, but I, I hope and pray that right now the man's out of church. He no longer preaches, went back to doing what he did. Uh, but I truly believe the man got saved. I really do. You don't just up and quit this stuff uh, without the Lord. I mean, it was a, a completely 190 degree turnaround and was very faithful in that of the things of the Lord for about two and a half years. And uh, for whatever reason, he got back out of church, and when he did, he lost his family, lost his home, lost everything he had. Uh, and the man needs prayer. I don't know where he's at today. That was some many years ago, numbers years ago, but I don't know where he's at today. But uh, I hope he's still in this world. If he is, I hope he's back where he needs to be with the Lord. Uh, but that's between him and the Lord. All I can do is pray for him. But as we begin to get into this study and concerning that of the two greatest battles that we're faced with once we become a child of the king is that of the devil in the flesh. Uh, a lot of times we underestimate the power of the devil and make no mistake about it. Uh, the devil has got power. 
And uh, I'll even go this far. He probably knows more about the Word of God than me and you ever know. Uh, the Word of God says, strange, I think not it's strange that Satan himself can transform himself into the angel of light. What better way for Satan to transform himself into angel of light is through these new so-called Bibles they got out. That's one way that I can see that he can do that is the way he changes verses, takes verses out, uh, puts other verses in, and uh, they don't mean the same as what the original authorized King James Version means. Uh, there's no similarity there. They're so far apart. But uh, Satan... Uh, he will try everything he can possibly do uh, uh, to try to bring your past up in front of you. He will con continuously accuse you uh, to your face uh, about the things you used to be in order to try to get your uh, try to get you to doubt your salvation. Don't be that naive unto that of Satan because. That's his job. That's what he's uh, in here to do. And he knows as well as anything that he's not got long here before he will reach his final destination and that of a place called hell. We find in Luke's gospel 4 and 6, it said, The devil said unto him, All power will I give unto thee and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will I give it. Now, this is a time in where he was tempting that of Christ. Now, I want to say this. Don't think uh, that you're any better than anybody else out there. Uh, Christ set an example for us when he was tempted by that of the devil. Be assured, if he's going to tempt Christ, he is definitely going to tempt you. That you can be assured of. But every time Satan come against that of Christ and use the word of God against him, Christ always took the Word of God and put it back in its original correct text, and that is what caused Satan to flee from the presence of the Lord. He could not outdo Christ in that of his own words. He couldn't do it. He couldn't feed him, defeat him with that of his own words. Just like he cannot defeat us with that of the words of the Lord if we are where we need to be with the Lord. We're, we, we've got much more wisdom than that. Paul states about uh, not being uh, ignorant of his devices and his little tricks, and he's got all kinds of tricks out there. But one thing he'll try to get you to do more than anything is doubt your salvation. Don't let him do that. If you know that you know that you know that God one day saved your soul, then you seal that in your heart and do not let Satan play around with you concerning that in which you got from God. We find in 1 Thessalonians 2 and 18, it says, Wherefore we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered me. Now we're talking about a man of God here. One of the probably one of the greatest. Uh, he is the greatest New Testament uh, men of God, I believe. This man went through trials and tribulations and uh, everything you can imagine. I little doubt if any of us would have been able to go through what Paul did. But yet Paul had a vision gave unto him like none of us has ever had. Uh, he saw the light coming down out of heaven and spoke to him out of heaven there on the road to Damascus. And oh my, that right there would cause anybody to change like you wouldn't believe. And there's a night flying around here and I'm trying to swat it. But Paul uh, was tempted. He was hindered by that of Satan in many things he tried to do for that of the Lord. And you can be assured he's going to hinder you in the works uh, you have for that of God himself. You're going to be tempted and you're going to be hindered with him just like Paul and all the rest of them was. Remember what happened to Peter. That uh, uh, Peter even told Christ and said, uh, if it comes down to it, and I'm paraphrasing this, if, uh, if they kill you, then they're going to have to kill me too. And Christ, uh, Christ told Peter, he said, before the crow, crow, uh, crop crows thrice this night, you shall deny me. And uh, Peter uh, pretty well said, no, I'll never deny you. I'll go, go with you even unto your death. And sure enough, whenever it came to the time they arrested Christ and took him in, 
uh, to set down judgment upon him. Christ, uh, Peter began to deny him. Satan entered in. Christ had told him before that, Satan uh, or Peter, Satan has a desire to have you that he may sift you as wheat. This is what that was leading up to, and he told him that before this ever took place. So uh, Satan's got his eye on each and every one of us. He's going to hinder us in every way he can. But we've got to realize, with that of God in our life, uh, we have someone to help fight our battles. We have someone to help overcome the temptations and the hindrances that Satan puts out there. Christ has made a way of an escape for each and every one of us, and, and we've got to realize it's there. Uh, Christ has gave us power uh, to be over, uh, to be able to be overcomers uh, in that of this world concerning the battles that we have to do and deal with with that of Satan. Uh, in Ephesians, Paul writes about putting on the whole armor of God, uh, so his furious, uh, furious darts will not penetrate unto that of us. And we need to realize that and remember that to make sure that we have got the armor of God on uh, us at all times. So Satan won't have as good of a chance of getting to us as what he would have had. Then we find in Peter, 1 Peter 5 and 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your advisor, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. So he's always going about one to another, trying his best to find something in your life that's got you down or got you depressed or got you to doubting something or got you to feeling a way toward a brother and sister you not, should not feel or toward a neighbor or toward someone in the world. And if he can find you in this situation, all you've done is left your door cracked open just a little bit. And that's all he needs is to find somebody with the door cracked a little bit so he can slip in and continuously try to aggravate you with whatever's going on in your life to the point that you may end up sinning. So we need to be aware of this. We need to be aware of his snares. Uh, we need to be aware of his tricks because he's out there and he's going to try everything he can do uh, to get that of a child of God. Uh, to get out of God's will. Why? Simply because if we get out of God's will, then God knows then that he will turn us over to the devil and let the devil do with, with us what we will. Uh, that don't mean that he won't encamp our soul when we die uh, and be able to take that with him if we're truly saved. But it does mean this, that he can literally destroy us uh, as far as the blessings God has placed in our life. He can destroy that of our homes. He can destroy that of us and our walks with that of the Lord. He can destroy the light that we're shining unto that of a lost and dying world. And that light that we're shining, it may be the only light that's being shine, shown unto that of our loved ones. And if he puts that light out, what hope has our loved ones got? So we need to really make sure that we try our best to walk upright before God to keep God's word in our hearts at all times. And Paul said, let this mind be in you that is in Christ. We need to have the mind of Christ uh, so we can be aware of the, uh, the devices of Satan at all times. We need to always think about heavenly things, keep heavenly things on our mind. Uh, and, and don't worry and don't let these uh, resistance and the temptations that Satan's going to throw at us uh, be a hindrance in that of our walk with the Lord. If Satan puts that hindrance there, uh, I'll assure you uh, God's will is going to be done. He's going to make a way where we can uh, accomplish that, what God want us, wanted us to do. It may take a little longer than what it originally should have, but God's going to take care of us. He's going to see to it that we do our part uh, if we're willing to do it, and he's going to be right there on beside us to help us accomplish that what he needs done. So you just keep on keeping on and don't let the devil discourage you. Don't let him doubt your salvation uh, and don't let him uh, think that you're something or that you can't never be nothing for that of the Lord because we're all 
born equally into the grace of God, and we all become equal unto that of God. There's no big eyes and little use in this thing. We're all working together for the same purpose. We all may have different gifts or different callings in our life, but so does the body. It's got the arms. It's got the legs. None of them are identically alike. They've got their own purpose, got their own place. That's the way the family of God is. Uh, we've got uh, each and every one of us has got our own job to do. We've got our own purpose for with that of the Lord. We've got uh, our own thing we need to be doing for that of the Lord, but yet we're all one body working together for the same goal. Now let's go into that of the flesh just a little bit. And the first thing I want to say right off the bat concerning that of the flesh is that uh, you will never see a time in your life where you won't be battling against that of the flesh. It's always going to be out there trying its best to throw you down and to get you to heed to the lust of it. It's a never-ending battle. And we're all going to have to be faced with this, and we will be faced with it. Paul said this in Romans 7 and 18, said, For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. Paul had never found one thing about his flesh that could do anything for the glory of God. All his flesh wanted to do was uh, go after the pleasures of this world. That's all it wanted to do. That's all your flesh wants to do. And you're going to be in a continuous battle with it. There's going to be a lot of times in your life that you're going to heed to that flesh. Uh, you will. Don't think and be so naive that you don't think you can't do that because you can and you will sometime or another in your Christian walk with the Lord. But when you do heed to it, don't think that God's just forgot about you and don't let men think and make you think that you're no good no more. Uh, you're not fit for nothing. You're just played a hypocrite. You never got saved. You was uh, uh, playing it all along and and them knowing good and well they've been times in their own life they've heeded to the flesh they've made mistakes their self uh, listen we got to be there one for another we're all in this same battle together we're in the battle with that of Satan we're in the battle with that of flesh and we if we ain't there to help one another out oh man we're all hurting because we're supposed to be a unit in that of the love of God, one with another, in one mind, in one accord, so that we can work together uh, for that of the identifying of the church, so we can help the brother when he's in need, not hinder that brother. We need to be a help to that one, not a hurt to him, because you yourself, me myself, are going to find ourselves in situations when now and then we want to heed to that flesh. It may be just a outburst of words that you would have never said any other time, but because you had a little anger in that of your flesh, it caused you to spew out things that you would have never have said. Uh, they may be times you let your eyes get on that of a woman or they get on that of a man. And if you're not very careful... You're going to allow yourself to go lusting after that through that of the flesh, and it's really going to cause you to have a fall. That don't mean that God still don't love you. It don't mean he still don't love you. He does love you. He cares for you, and he would want to restore you more than anything. But you've got to get a past what man thinks. You've got to get a past of what you yourself would think. That's what's wrong with a lot of people. It's so hard for them to forgive their self when they do something like this. But we've got to realize we've got to be able to forgive ourselves and let God forgive us, cry out to him with that of a true repentant cry. And God is just and merciful to forgive us of all unrighteousness. But we've got to be willing and get to a place to forgive ourselves. 
And don't worry about all of these people that's trying to put some door up in front of you or some wall up in front of you that you can't no longer get back to where you need to be with God because they ain't, they ain't nothing but self-righteousness. That's all I can say about it. They think they're so much better than you that they could never heed to the flesh. And I'll assure you, somehow or another throughout the day, they're finding their self heeding to it. Sure, it might not have been that bad, but listen, it don't. there's no such thing as a little sin or a big sin. It's all sin in the eyes of God. So, And they need to realize this, and you need to realize that all good things works to the glory of those that love the Lord. Don't don't sit there and wallow in your self-pity. Yes, we're all going to be sorrowful of the things we've done, but we've got to get a past it. We've got to move on. We find that uh, Paul said in Romans 8 and 8, So then they that are in, in the flesh cannot please God. As long as we're out there in the flesh, and doing what pleases the flesh, it's impossible for us to please God. So we've got to try our best to get beyond this flesh in order to be able to please God into that of His glory to the point that we can lift Him up above all men that by doing so, He may draw man unto Him. And if we can keep Him to the point of lifting Him up, quit trying to lift this flesh up, and heed to this flesh, then we're going to accomplish that in which God sent us out in the world to do. We've got enough hindrances as it is, and we're going to battle it all the day long. But we got to realize we got to stay in prayer with that of the Lord. we got to seek God continuously uh, concerning the things uh, that this old flesh is trying to desire us into, and seek God to help us and to strengthen us in this area in Galatians 5.17, it says, For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to another, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. In other words, the spirit of God is in constant battle with that of the flesh when it comes up against you in some way of its lust. Remember what Christ said in the book of Matthew, He that looketh upon a woman with lust in his heart has committed adultery already. These people that can get such pictures in their mind and put their self right there with this person, that those thoughts become sinful thoughts. Uh, we need to be careful uh, about these things when uh, we're faced with that of the flesh and and going in a, in the simple way uh, of that of the devil, uh, he uses our flesh, and he, our flesh is his greatest tool. It's his greatest tool that he can use against us in order that it, he may be able to get us to fall uh, in the ways of that concerning the Lord. Uh, if he can get us to fall, then he can cause a lot more damage in other areas in our life. Uh, in in the book of Thessalonians. Just for a few minutes, I want to read something for you. Uh, in the Word of God, uh, talking about that of uh, what well, can be aimed at the flesh. But it says in uh, Thessalonians chapter 4, <laughs> in verse 16, it says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. And that's not what I was looking for. I can't recall where it is at, at the moment, moment, but it goes that whenever uh, sin is conceived, uh, uh, or whenever lust conceived, brings forth sin, sin is finished, it brings forth death. Uh, but when you get involved in going after the things that the flesh desires, uh, you could get yourself in a place where it could cause you to leave this world a lot quicker than what you would have. If you're not very, very careful, remember the Lord said that we can shorten or lengthen our days. I'd rather be in the ways of the Lord and live a good, prosperous life than to be in the ways of my flesh and get killed the next day. Oh man, uh, the things that we could miss out on uh, by, by doing things that could so easily take us out of this world and given into. They've been many a man killed over some man's wife. They've been many husbands killed over, or, or women killed over some man's husbands. 
so we need to make sure that we keep this flesh under subjection at all times because you're going to battle it and it's going to be a battle and it, like I said, it's one of Satan's most greatest tools he's got to use against you is that of your own self. Because like Paul said, there's no good thing to wealth in it. Uh, it's never going to go to a place called heaven. It was cursed from the beginning of time. Uh, and it will return back to the dust of the earth in which it came. Uh, there's no place for it in hell or heaven. It's the soul that's going to end up in one of the two. But as far as that flesh goes, it's going back to the dust of the earth in which it came. So, and it's going to, it's going to desire after the things of this world that it was formed from. It was formed from this world, and it's going to always desire the things of this world. Uh, we also find in the reading of uh, the Word of God there in First John two and sixteen, for all the all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye. And the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. That's what I was just saying. This flesh came from this of the world. Our soul came from that of God. He breathed the breath of life into Adam, and Adam became a living soul. But he created the body that Adam dwelled in out of the dust of this earth. And this body is always going to, dwell, going to desire the things of this world in which it came from. So we're in a constant battle. And if you was to happen to fall or give into it in any way, I pray that you get to the point to forgive yourself and, and get a past that and then ask God to forgive you and get back in the, the grace of God so God can again start to use you for his glory. Uh, just because sometimes we mess up don't mean that God throws us away. I know that uh, there's a, a doctrine that's out there. I don't agree with it and I don't believe it. I can tell you where they get their doctrine from. Uh, and what verse they used to back this up with, but there's a, uh, a certain group of uh, so-called Christians. They may be Christians. Uh, I'm sure some of them are. Uh, but they teach that once you become saved, and then uh, if you ever backslide, uh, then you no longer can ever be a part of that of the kingdom of God. They use this verse, those taking hold of the plow and looking back is not fit for the kingdom of God. So they say that you're no longer fit to be a child of God if you mess up. Uh, backsliding is nothing more than uh, than you uh, uh, sliding back out into the things of the world. That's all it is. You slide back from what God delivered you from, but God don't separate you. God don't uh, do away with you because you're still his child. So Remember that. God's going to love you and he's going to care when all the world will forsake you. God will be there for you. And I'll assure you this. You may have something in your life right now. I don't know. But if they are, I'm going to pray for each and every one that watches this. And if you have got something going on, it just seems like it's kind of impossible for you to come back because of what people said, uh, the fingers people's been pointing, uh, the whispering's been taking place behind your back. I'm going to pray that God will give you the strength and the courage to be able to look over that uh, religious type of people and get yourself back where God needs you in his grace that he may be able to use you for the glory of his kingdom. That's what God's wanting. That's what God wants from you. And that's the reason God saved you so he could help you in the time of need. And believe me, we're all going to need a plenty of help from God along this journey. And God is faithful and just to help us throughout all our life. He said, I'll go with you even unto the end of the world. So he'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. But when we do kindly walk away from him, listen, he's just a whisper away. He's just a whisper away waiting for that darling beloved sister, or that darling daughter, or that darling beloved son just to come back to him. So don't let your shortcomings be some uh, uh, fanatic Christian's party. Don't let it be and turn into that. You get above 
their self-righteousness, go uh, beyond their self-righteousness, and you get yourself back where you need to be with the Lord before you end up uh, letting the devil cause you to lose everything God's blessed you with. Because God wants you to be blessed. And God wants you to be able to prosper. He said it's his Father's good pleasure that we prosper and be in good health. So don't let the devil steal no more, no more than what he's already stole. He done took your joy. But you know what? God's a restorer. He wants to restore that joy back to you. So please, whatever you've got going on in your life, look back to God and realize that we're all human. And this flesh desires the things it came from. This flesh came from the earth and it desires the things of this world. And to stay close to God that you may not give in to these things. And seek God earnestly day by day and pray that God will strengthen you and increase your faith uh, to the point that you can be become overcomers uh, when it comes to the uh, the lusting of that of the flesh. You can overcome that through that of God. You can overcome uh, the trials and the, uh, the hindrances that the devil puts out there. You can become overcomers in all of these things uh, to the point that uh, you can be victorious in that of the Lord, victorious over that of the self-righteous, victorious over that of the flesh, victorious over that of Satan, but you've got to let God do it with you. You've got to be willing to let God take charge. And you follow him. Don't, don't try to get him to follow you. You follow Christ, and he will... Uh, get you to the point where you can become victorious and get back in where you need to be. Forget about what people are saying because I'll assure you they've made mistakes themselves. They get them into the flesh. What you need to be concerned about is you. Those out there is not going, you're not going to face them on judgment day. You and the Lord's going to be standing there uh, face to face. And that's where your judgment's coming to. Don't worry about these self-righteous people that's wanting to try to judge you because their judgment don't matter to nothing. The judgment that they may give unto you, they one day will get the same measure of judgment into their life. So you remember that and pray for them. They need prayers. You get yourself back where you can be and where you need to be with the Lord and then you pray for this self-righteous crowd because they really need the help of the Lord and for God to shine a light into their uh, blinded eyes that they may see the truth, to know that they're no different than anyone else. And I'm sure in time they would come to appreciate that. So I want to say this. I hope and pray that this will be a help to you and it ain't as far into it as I wanted to go. Uh, but this is about as far as I can go with it right now. We may get into it again at another date and another time. But please, if you got a loved one out there that's lost and undone without God, uh, and you would desire me to help you pray for that child uh, or that mother or that father, please uh, just leave me a, a comment down there and, and just say, uh, Brother, I appreciate if you help me pray for this one or that one. And I'll assure you I will spend time earnestly with the Lord uh, praying for this one. Uh, that one day at a while that God may be able to get your household where it will give you the assurance to know that the coming of the Lord, that your family has made preparations to go on to be with him. Oh, what a joy, what a blessing that'll be. That's my heart's desire is to try to see the homes saved, try to see them restored. Some of them may be out of fellowship with the Lord. Uh, let me know. I want to earnestly pray for them because I have a desire uh, to get as many people back as the devil has stolen from us. I want them back, and I'm not going down, I'm not laying down my battle armor for uh, for that of the devil. I'm going to keep on keeping on for the Lord, and uh, if I have to go into the prison camps and that of my prayer closet to uh, uh, lay down everything I have before the Lord, that he may hear uh, my cries unto that one that is lost and undone or that one that's wavered down to the world. I'm willing to do it. And each and every one of you should be willing to do the same thing uh, for that of a brother or sister or for that of someone you don't even know, but you know they're lost. You ought to be able to spend time on your knees seeking God that one day at a while 
their soul may be saved. So until next time, we pray, uh, tr pray and truly hope this has been a blessing. This has been a help to you in some way or another. Uh, most of all, we hope it's been strength unto that of your soul. It's nothing within me, but it's all in that of God. For it was the Spirit of God that has given me the knowledge in studying that of the Word of God to be able to be a help to you. So give all the glory to God. And uh, if you do that, then all's well and fine with that of the Lord because He's the one that we all should always glory in, give praise to, and recognize Him as being Lord and Lord and King of Kings. He, he, he is out of... Uh, uh, he was the God of the old. He was God in that of man, and he's God in that of the spirit. Uh, and these three make one. Uh, but he, he's our Savior. He's our sovereign God, even unto the end of the world. So until next time, stay safe, and please, please stay in communication with that of the Lord so that, the prayer, so that your prayers will not be hindered. Uh, we love you. We appreciate you. And we pray that each and every one of you has a blessed day.